Hello, today I've got another fairy tale look for you. This time it's about the Toy Soldier, um, which is another less well known fairy tale, but I really like it. Uh, as a background, although it doesn't really matter what color this is, I actually used a, a pale green gel nail polish uh, by Born Pretty Store, and then I put um, gold on top of it, so you didn't actually see the green anymore. The gold powder that you just rub on top of it with um, a makeup applicator and then top it off with gel top coat. I actually just use this because I uh, actually, well, my only, one and only uh, gold nail polish has actually dried out. So I didn't have much of a choice. Um, but yeah, it would be easier to just use gold nail polish instead. Then on top of that I used acrylic paint to actually paint the fairy tale on. And uh, of course a detail brush. And then finally, to top off everything, I used the Catrice Gel Like 2-in-1 base and top coat. And yeah, while you're seeing me painting it on my nails, I'll just uh, tell you what the fairy tale is about. Um, it's about a toy soldier, obviously. Yeah, very surprising. Um, yeah, he's a gift for a boy along with um, 23 other toy soldiers, I think. Uh, but he only has one leg. So yeah, obviously the fairy tale is about him because he only has one leg, so he's special. Um, and yeah, he falls in love with a, a little dancer, which is also a toy, obviously. However, uh, there is also a Jack in the Box who is also in love with the little dancer girl. And um, yeah, obviously he doesn't like the uh, toy soldier very much because, of course, the dancer likes him as well. Um, so he curses them because in fairy tales it's usually um, anyone evil can curse other people because that's the thing apparently. Uh, yeah, he curses them so that they'll never be happy together. And then because of that curse, the little toy soldier falls out of the window and he gets found by some boys who put him in a paper boat and then start playing with him. But he ends up in the sewers, of course, and there he meets a not so friendly rat and a more friendly frog. And after that he ends up um, in the water and gets eaten by a fish because he really had a rough day today. And the fish then gets caught by a fisherman who then sells the fish at the marketplace where it gets bought by the servant of the family whose, um, yeah, whose toy soldier it was. So yeah, of course that's something that only happens in fairy tales. But through those strokes of fate he ends up back at the table in the room of the boy um, where he uh, again meets the little dancer and yeah but because of the curse of course they can't be happy so he falls into the fireplace and melts because you know yeah some fairy tales are pretty gruesome I guess um, but there's also a good fairy there because there always is in a fairy tale and uh, she changes the curse into them being happy not as toys but somewhere else and then there's a gust of wind and the uh, little dancer girl also falls into the fireplace and melts. Because that's how good curses work, I suppose. Equally gruesome as the evil ones. Although, um, yeah, of course the boy is really sad because he just lost two toys, obviously. Um, but then past the window uh, walks a soldier with a dancer. And they both look really happy, so uh, apparently they somehow got turned to real people after melting as toys. Very logical. But either way, in fairy tale logic it works, so I guess that's a happy ending. And yeah, the reason I liked it so much as a child is because I was the sort of child who always, you know, really like felt like her toys were really alive. So I thought it was a nice idea so that if they would like get lost or something, they would live happily ever after somewhere else. Yeah. Either way, uh, yeah, it was just a fun fairy tale and I had a lot of fun painting it on my nails. Obviously I painted the little toy soldier and the dancer and then in the center here I'm painting the castle. Uh, a cardboard castle, toy castle obviously, where he first saw the little dancer. And yeah, all in all I don't think this actually took me all that long to paint, about a little over half an hour I think. Um, and then it took of course like, you know, 10 minutes to actually dry. Uh, but once everything is dry it's time to add top coat because obviously... Acrylic paint will uh, fade off otherwise in water. And yeah, once that's on there, the entire nail art is done. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you enjoyed um, listening to my sort of, yeah, very roughly told version of a fairy tale. Um, either way, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.